Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is gonna be awesome. So, today, and this show's been in the works for quite a while, so I'm excited about this. So today we're gonna be taking a look at an exclusive record player. This is the Crosley C100 Champagne Edition, an exclusive color that you can only get one place and one place only, and that place is not Amazon. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll tell you where to get it. But let's unbox it, let's review it. Let's talk about this classic record player that is still a fantastic starting point for people getting into vinyl. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Behold, the Crosley C100. Now, this turntable is a fantastic option for people on a budget that want sort of a DJ style turntable. No, you can't scratch on this because it is belt driven. However, there's a C200 that is direct drive if you want the direct drive version. And that's also a fantastic turntable we've reviewed before. But the C100 is fantastic for most people. Two speeds, a great unit. This is an exclusive that you can only get one location. I'll tell you at the end of the video where you can get it. And this is the Champagne Color Edition. So let's get into it. Knew this was coming for some time. Been very excited to have the opportunity to present it to you. And it is in retail packaging. So let's get this box out of the other box. And here it is. Comes out of the exact same factory that the Audio-Technica LP120, LP60 come out of. These are great. These are really, really good turntables. And the value of this is incredible because if you are looking for something akin to an LP120, you can get something that is uh, very similar. The one or two features that aren't there with the LP120, this uh, has two speeds versus three speeds. There's not gonna be a quartz lock. There is gonna be a pitch slider and strobe and all that good stuff. Anyway, it's a great turntable. And you may be saying, well, how do you know you haven't opened it yet? I thought this was a review. Well, I've reviewed like three or four of these in the past, so I'm expecting good things. All righty. So, actually, I think I'm going to lay this down and slide it out. So, this is the bottom. I always open these things upside down, but let's go ahead and lay it down and slide it out. Okay. Not so graceful, but I got it out. <laughs> this plastic handle on the inside of the lid was catching, so it wasn't allowing it to slide out that easily. Okay, so right on top we've got the felt platter mat. So we'll set that aside for right now. Next we have the dust cover wrapped in sort of a foam wrap. It's not really a plastic wrap, it's like a foam. This has a clear with a bluish tint dust cover. Looks gorgeous. I love a smoked dust cover. But I do like the fact this has a bluish tint to it. These are extremely susceptible to scratches and surface abrasion. So be very careful. Don't ever put anything on it. Don't look at it too hard. I mean, that's just the way it is with all acrylic dust covers. Every, every acrylic dust cover is just a magnet for scratches. So treat it with kid gloves. I'm going to set this way aside so I don't, you know, knock it off the table or something while we're putting this together. So we've got our manual set that aside we've got rca cables silica packet and then over here in the side is uh some components they're actually in the side of the styrofoam but this was snagged on the tape so in here we've got the uh, counterbalance we've got the 45 adapter and we've got the head shell and cartridge which we'll look at closer in a minute and this box is going to be the power supply. Now, if we flip it upside down, you will see that the uh, platter is under here, taped tightly to the bottom. So I'm going to grab my knife, carefully remove it, just like that. And Interesting, it's got another felt platter mat already on it. Strange they include two, and it's wrapped in cardboard as well. 
Okay, we should be able to get the turntable out now. Removing each side of the styrofoam, just like that. Okay, and then we just have the plastic wrap with the turntable itself. Wow, that color is cool, dude. That pops. Looks kind of like a gold. I love that. Wow, that's really, really cool. Yeah, there it is. Um, it's pretty lightweight when it is without platter and everything. That's because Crosley does not use the internal dead weight that Audio Technica does with the LP120s. So it's, uh, again, comes out of the same factory, but they they leave it without that extra weight. You know, and the, the weight is, you know, people will talk about whether or not that really adds to the, the sound quality or not. But yeah, this is a fantastic fully manual turntable. It's got an S-shaped tone arm and a standard half inch mount head shell assembly. It does have the pitch control. It is two speeds. This one does Bluetooth out, so we'll take a look at that as well. Um, it's got a voltage switch and uh, it is belt drive. So we've got the uh, brass motor pulley, the main spindle bearing, and there is a direct drive version of this as well. If you like the direct drive, get that extra torque. Uh, but this is perfect for most people and it's a heck of a good deal. It's a heck of a good deal. Um, I smile when I see it. It's just a great turntable. Nobody has anything bad to say about this that's had one. I mean, if you have one of these, you, it'll put a smile on your face and you're just gonna be like, yeah, that's a, that's a really good deal. So you can see a couple of things here. So there's the punch out um, for the queuing light, which isn't used on this particular unit. There's another knockout or punch out up here. Not sure what this one is, this rectangular one. There is a uh, holder there if you want to put another head shell assembly. The 45 adapter goes back there. Uh, start and stop on and off with a strobe light down there. Pitch adjust, like I said. Speed control down there. It's pretty simple. It is a simple device, but it is a good device. So let's start putting it together. We are going to be doing a direct feed sound test since this is a turntable without speakers later on in the video. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so here is the platter. It is substantially heavy as it should be, so good mass inertia. It is die cast aluminum uh, with a powder coat top finish, it looks like. And inside here, we've got these nubs for the strobe. We've got a ribbon holding the belt on. The sub platter uh, is where the belt goes. So again, motor pulley there, and then this goes there. So uh, two holes to grasp this with. Also, two punch outs, and you may be saying, why is there two of everything? That is so that the weight is even. So if you had a punch out on only one side, then the weight would be unevenly distributed. So we're going to quickly and easily put our belt on. And all we have to do is stretch this ribbon across like that. Now, as you can see, it has a tendency to want to roll. So we got to make sure that it's straight. So get this out of there. And then if we move this to the left or the right, you can see the position against the sub platter and we can see yep that is good so platter is in place i love how it's sort of recessed down here it's a low profile looks really good i'm really surprised they're including two dust covers with this so this is the one that was we saw earlier it's a nice thick soft and flexible felt platter mat but they also include this one that's got the kind of retro logo embossed it's a thinner one but yeah, that's kind of cool. So you've got the option. This uh, follows this sort of DJ turntable style of having a white line or something off the side there. And the whole point is that. So at a, at a glance, you can tell whether or not it's rotating or not. So that's why they do that. So I'm going to leave that one on. It's a bit thicker. I may have, I've probably put an acrylic one on ultimately. But for today's purposes, that should do the trick. All right, next we need to put the head shell and uh, cartridge on. Here is... The head shell, and like I said, standard half inch mount, so you can uh, upgrade these very easily. It's factory aligned, comes with an AT95E, and the AT95E is a great, about a $50 cartridge, so sort of a step up from the uh, 3600s that we see so often. And this has an, a diamond stylus, it is elliptical, so for ellipticals, the uh, the tip is cut with a little bit of a chiseled edge, so it goes a bit deeper in the groove and uh, gives you better sound quality. And 
that's a good thing for sure. This will track at two grams. I'm going to leave the guard on there for now. All metal construction. This is all good stuff, high quality. Uh, I'm going to install it as simply as that. Again, this is factory aligned. You can take a protractor and double check that if you want, or if you put a new cartridge on there, make adjustments, easy enough to do. But installing it was literally as easy as that. And that is a fantastic cartridge. It's discontinued uh, apparently directly from, uh, according to Audio-Technica's website, but I think that it's probably spec'd out as a manufacturer OEM part right now, which is what they do with the, the 3600s as well. And you could probably get it elsewhere on other third-party sites. Okay, um, that's the initial, oh, we've got to put the counterbalance on. We're going to set this to track at two grams. Okay, it's been a while since I've demonstrated how to set the tracking force. It's super easy. Uh, you don't need a gauge. If you have a gauge, use it. If you don't, just use this method. So screw this thing on kind of indiscriminately. Uh, there's this, the rear, by the way, this is a metal. Uh, the back of this one, I think that's a plastic stub on the back. And it's a two-piece tone arm. And the gimbal is nice and tight. It's a good bearing. And uh, anyway, so screw that on, release this from there, take the guard off because we're going to balance it. So what we want to do is what's called floating it. And that means that within its movement up and down, it's somewhere in the middle, just sort of floating. So you adjust the counterbalance until it doesn't go down, doesn't go up. It just wants to float in the middle. Now, this is why it's important to have a good gimbal because cheap gimbals, it's almost impossible to do this because it's just not balanced delicately enough. This one has a, is a good standard bearing, so or a good standard gimbal, so it does a fine job. Okay, so it's floated. That means it is in a neutral position. So going down here, we're going to take the outer plastic ring, not the, the metal part, but just the plastic ring, and gently move it to zero. And now we know that it's calibrated to zero. Zero means zero. And then all we have to do is rotate this thing until it gets to the proper value, which in this case is two grams. Now this is the anti-skate adjustment. Somebody requested recently that we verify uh, or show how to verify an anti-skate adjustment. And I'll explain what it is in a minute. But for now, let's set it initially to the same value as the tracking force. Next, 45 adapter. It comes with this boring, cheap plastic one. Come on, guys, put a metal one on there. Just an aluminum one would be so much better. But if you don't, upgrade to the Recordology exclusive 45 adapter. This is our signature orange one. It sits right back there. I love how there's a little indent in the back. You can see it slopes down. Simple design, push down, and it allows you to grasp it easily. Let's take a look at the controls and the back panel. Okay, down here we do have a cueing lever. So we're able to gently cue, which is a good thing. Again, if your records are skipping, make sure that lift shelf is down. It wouldn't happen on something like this as frequently as, but suitcase players, all-in-ones, oftentimes this lift shelf on cheaper record players hangs up. It doesn't do it on this. Um, there's the uh, pitch adjust, which is basically a speed control for the motor. So there's a little detent position here at zero. And if you find that you need to adjust the speed, that's how to do it, plus or minus 10%. Down here we have, and I'll show you the strobe and how you would do that. It's very simple. Uh, the speed switch, so it's two position switch there. It goes green for 45, red for 33, and then a Bluetooth pairing button. Over here is the start and stop switch and the on and off switch. This will turn on the strobe light on the side of this. You'll see that there's a frosted area there that shines light on these strobe markings. That's how you verify the speed. Again, I'll show you in just a minute how that works. Alrighty, looking at the back panel, obviously we've got the clips and hinges for the uh, acrylic dust cover. We do have the gold-plated line output for connecting this unit to speakers, sound bar, sound system, et cetera, et cetera. There's no built-in audio, no built-in speakers, I mean. So something to consider. Also, there's a grounding terminal. So if you're using an external preamp, an external phono preamp, you would need that. Speaking of the funnel preamp, here is the switch. There's a two position, either line level, meaning that you are using the built-in preamp, or phono level, meaning that you're bypassing it. 12 volt power supply, and another little knockout thing that doesn't appear to be in use. Let's take a quick look on the bottom side. Okay, on the bottom here, it is a molded plastic with these feet, all four feet have a pivot to them. Uh, I'm going to try to tilt that down so you can see a little better. 
So it's a decorative foot with an inset rubber piece there. And we do have the speed control right down here, speed adjustment. So if you wanted to calibrate that pitch slider to zero, let's say that you wanted the zero marking, that detent zero position to be exactly 33 or 45, and assuming it wasn't already, then you could use this, the, uh, the pots down here to make that adjustment. But again, all, all usual adjustments would be made topside and very quick and easy. I also want to point out that this does have molded handles in the on the sides, which makes it really nice when you're carrying this unit from one side of the house to the other or moving it around. Okay, operation is very easy. So we've got it plugged in. We're going to turn this on. It was a little red light shining out there. Um, start and stop is push of a button right there. All you have to do is start and stop. And again, it's fully manual, so it's not going to auto stop or anything like that. Um, if you want to change speeds down here, pushing this little button makes that LED go green and it changes from 33 to 45. And then we can make the adjustment with the pitch up or down right here. Now, the strobe is how you make that adjustment. I'm going to show you that. Uh, just know that when I make the adjustments, it's me moving the slider up and down. Okay, so the player is stopped right now. I'm going to go ahead and press the start switch. And you will see those lines turn into a blur except for one, one series of lines that appears to be moving to the left. That is for the speed we're on, which right now is 33. And as you can see, those dots are not steady, meaning that the speed is not quite accurate. In the case of this moving to the left, that means that it's a little bit fast. So what I'm gonna do is move that pitch slider up, which is slower, until they stop. And see how they're just totally still? That means that the speed is now set. By the way, I had to go up about 0.2% on the pitch slide. If it was closer to 10, like at the end of the range, I would feel more inclined to make an adjustment to the pots on the bottom, but this is fairly minimal, not a concern. Switching speeds now to 45, you'll see a different set of dots come to life, and they're pretty dang close. These, these are marching to the right, so in this case, they're a hair slow. So I'm going to pull the slider down a bit, maybe 0.8-ish, and we're right in range there. So as you can see, setting the speed is quick and easy, and knowing that you have perfect speed peace of mind. I love knowing that my record is not even a hair off. And with the strobe, it's as easy as that. What about anti-skate? And what is anti-skate? So in order to test that, I'm taking off the felt mat and I'm going to replace it with a glass platter mat, which will allow us to, uh, it needs to be a smooth surface with no grooves. If you use acrylic, the diamond stylus actually scratches that up. So anti-skate helps with a problem that record players with these types of tone arms have and that the tone arm by its nature is going to want to retract to the middle. It's going to kind of push itself towards the middle and therefore an anti-skate usually uses a spring mechanism to kind of push this way to neutralize that. So you don't want the tone arm to be biased. You don't want it pulling in, you don't want it pulling out and an anti-skate allows you to adjust that. So in order to set it, you know, usually you set it to the same value as the uh, counterbalance. So two grams downforce means two on the anti-skate. But sometimes you need to make fine-tune adjustments. So we're going to gently sit it there. We're going to set this to 33, spin it up, and it should just sit there neutral. And it does. So in this case, the two was a perfect setting. Now, let's see if I can mess with it. So I'm going to turn it towards higher value towards four and this should make it go out yep see it's pulling out I'm setting this back to two now i'm going to put this back on here my shaky hand and now i'm going to turn the value down and it should start retracting in it's not so that's zero on the anti-skate and it's still not pulling in interesting let's try it over here eh, a little bit a little bit yeah, it's actually, even at the zero value, it's not really wanting to pull in that much. So what would happen is it would start to uh, pull towards the spindle, which you don't want. And the reason why is it can bend your cantilever, the little, uh, the little piece that the stylus is held on by, the little thin metal piece. And when that happens, it can bend it, but it can also give the sound a bias because it's pushing up one side of the groove 
or the other. We don't want that. So anti-skate appears to be working fine, and I'm glad to see that. So for those of you who always wondered, now you know. Let's go ahead and test out the Bluetooth output first. We've got Vinyl Moon 84 on here. And um, so yeah, we're going to pair it to a Bluetooth speaker not included. This is actually the HYM Duo speaker. It's a really good little Bluetooth speaker. Unfortunately, it's paired to my phone, so I need to unpair it from there. And we're going to pair it to the turntable. And then we're going to do a line out direct feed sound test as well. So to start with, we're going to take our Bluetooth speaker and power it up. It'll instantly go into pairing mode looking for a device. Okay, so that's pair in pairing mode. And we're going to press and hold this for two seconds, which puts it into pairing mode, flashing uh, blue and red. And it's connected. Solid blue means it's connected up here. In this case, solid green means it's connected right there. So we can go ahead and play our record. So we're at 33 RPM. And we're going to drop our needle there. We should hear it coming through the speaker. And for those of you that are saying, oh, Bluetooth, you're ruining analog. Well, first of all, all audio is analog, even digital audio by the time you hear it. In terms of ruining the analog playback experience start to finish, newer Bluetooth codecs, specifically Aptex codecs, Bluetooth 5.0, can actually maintain lossless transmission. And I think that that's something to bear in mind. Bluetooth today is much more advanced than Bluetooth of 10 years ago. So to me, again, I will always go for the line output whenever possible. A lot of people like Bluetooth. It's a very popular feature amongst people new to vinyl, and they're still getting an analog experience to a degree. And if it's lossless, it, there's no loss. So they're still getting a complete analog experience, even if it is transmitted digitally at some point. There's nothing left to do except for a direct feed sound test. Okay, so here's the setup. We've got the turntable with the dust cover on now. Looks beautiful. Again, Vinyl Moon 84, side A. Uh, line output using the built-in preamp, so line output. And I do have a headphone amplifier in line, and the reason is my Zoom H2N recorder doesn't really take a line level input. So I have to use a headphone amplifier for units that don't have a volume control because it comes across too loud for this unit. It really has a mic level input. So essentially what we're doing is we're quieting down the volume so it can take the input here at the mic level. So frustrating, especially because it is labeled line input on the side of the recorder there, as you can see, but it's not really line level. So we will record this lossless, obviously YouTube, is going to be YouTube, but you should still get a sense for the sound quality. So let me get it all queued up. We'll drop the needle, headphone alert, time to put on the headphones, and you will be able to hear this turntable directly, as directly as possible, almost like being there. I gotta try something familiar. So here's the Enoch Light record that we always use, but I just gotta have some familiar music on here that I know what it's supposed to sound like. Okay, final thoughts. It's a winner. It just It's a great turntable. It really is. It sounds good, and it's fully adjustable, fully manual. You can do anything you want in terms of upgrades. You can upgrade the cartridge. You can upgrade, obviously, your 45 adapter if you're so inclined. And you can even have a second head shell set up ready to go 
for other purposes. You've got Bluetooth output. And this exclusive color looks really cool. It kind of reminds me of like mid 80s Marantz units. And it was kind of a kind of goldish tone was sort of cool, kind of like a DeLorean gold tone vibe to it. It's very 80s. I love it. Uh, exclusive color. Where can you get it? Well, there's only one place you can get it, and that is the Crosley website. So there you go. And uh, not available on Amazon. The base turntable is. You can get C100s there all day long. But if you want this champagne edition, I'll put a link in the description down below. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it. Thank you so much for being there. So this is only available on the Crosley website, the champagne edition. You can get the black and the silver edition elsewhere, but if you want this exclusive champagne edition one, there's only one place to get it. So I'll put a link down below. No big surprise. This thing was an amazing performer. I knew it would be because we reviewed this unit a couple of times, but it's good to revisit it every once in a while because it is such a classic, classic design, classic performance. And like I said, a really good, great place for people to want to get started. And they want this sort of DJ style turntable. And this being the belt drive version. Again, if you want the direct drive capability set, the torque and all that stuff, check out the Crosley C200. It's not available in this color. It's available in black only, I believe. But that's a story for a different day. We've done a video on it. Go ahead and check that out. Put a link down below for that too. But my friends, that's it for today. So happy record hunting and we'll see you next time.